Hello, my friends. Brett Patterson coming at you from the financial capital of the West, the land bountiful. Joined by the chairman. How you doing, Brett? Brian, it's great to see your Good face. See it's you. been a while since we've done a podcast. Especially all three of us. All three of us. The, land, the guy from the <clears throat> land northward. We got the band back together. Got That's the right. band back together. Welcome, Spencer Nelson. Thank you. Good Director to be of here. Financial Planning. Thank you, Brett. CFO. What else? Mugatu. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But we are excited to talk about today's topic because guess what happens on Tuesday, Brian? Got a big election. Got a big election. Mm -hmm. And we're all fired up. Yeah. And we're going to talk about what it means to investing. Okay. Hint. Not a whole lot. I want this to be like one of those college reveal, like when they choose the thing. Are you going to take your pullover off and you're, you're going to have either a Harris shirt or a, a Trump shirt to like tell us who's going to win? Are you going to do that today? Let's talk about, yes, we're going to talk about predictions. Oh, predictions. Predictions. We'll talk about predictions and what we know and what we don't know. But first, let's talk about year-to-date returns in the market. The S&P 500. It, here's an interesting quiz. You'd normally say, if somebody said, hey, what's outperforming, NASDAQ or S&P 500? Normally, you'd say NASDAQ. Normally, you'd say NASDAQ. Guess what has the lead this year? The S&P 500, 22.3% as of 10 minutes ago. The NASDAQ is at 21.65%. So the AI boom, is it booming? It's booming. But, but the Nasdaq's trailing. Right. Kind of interesting. Anyway, bonds. Spencer, I'm going to look at you as we talk about the aggregate bond index because you're my bond expert. I am going to go to a monotone bond voice. <laughs> bonds, the aggregate bond index uh, is down 0.67% on the year. That has been a tough year <laughs> for bonds. But Wait. Let's go one-year returns. Thank you for the monotone voice. It fits perfect with bonds. <laughs> one-year returns, so trailing 12 months. The S&P 500 is at 41.57%. The NASDAQ has the edge in one year up, 44%. That's a great one-year return. That's What's amazing. that bond index? 6.46. Well done, yeah. bonds. Bonds are not to build wealth. No, but crying out loud. But for the individuals who were on the short end of the curve and went to the intermediate end of the They're curve, like, what, 8%? actually, no, we, can I say this? I don't know if I can say this. We have clients that are up 15% over one year because they went short end to the intermediate term at the right time. Because, because we did a good we job. We did a good job. But a 15% versus a 44% return? No, 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 for sure. For Stay sure. Stay rich versus actually make money? Yes. No, I'm with you. <laughs> as sad as it makes me to say this, bonds do not build wealth. All right, good. I'm glad we're on the same page there, Spencer. Tuesday's election is coming up. If you've been on X or Facebook or anything, even the news... I don't even watch the news anymore. You guys watch the news? It's tough to watch. I do. I watch... Uh, my little boy actually likes to watch the news. So we watch uh, NBC Nightly News, usually before bedtime, with Lester Holt. Yeah. 20 minutes. Tommy. <laughs> my Tommy loves to watch the news. So we watch that for 20 minutes. I, I will talk to you later about this. Yeah, it's interesting. He's the only person I know that watches the news. Wherever you're getting your news, the thing that that is happening is there's so much we've talked about this before fear sells it sells clicks it sells marketing it sells whatever and people more than ever before in the history of this country in the history of this world are inundated with a fire hose of negative information okay what's the, the problem with that is we know that if you're investing, you need to do the exact opposite of how you feel. What do I mean by that, Spencer? When you feel greedy, it's probably time to get a little conservative. And when you're scared, that's the time to get aggressive. 
and people do the exact opposite. And so as people are fearful right now because Trump's a dictator or Harris is a communist, whichever way you shake it, people with that uncertainty or that fear, they have a tendency to kind of batten down the hatches, Mm -hmm. sell, maybe go into bonds, I don't know, do everything that is opposite of what they should actually do. So, Charlie Munger, Brian, I know you love Charlie, the late Charlie Munger. The late Charlie Munger. Has this great quote. He said, the first rule of compounding your money is to not interrupt it unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Okay? That quote is kind of the foundation for today's podcast. Don't interrupt compounding. So, there's two things that we at Iron Gate Global will never do. Okay? We will never predict who's going to win an election or adjust portfolios based on who's going to win the election because we don't know. Yeah. Like we don't know who's going to win. And I'm going to rip my shirt off later. <laughs> right? Unless you know who's going to win. I don't. Okay. I don't. We don't do that. We don't invest based on politics. And you know what the other thing we don't do, Brian? What's that? Macroeconomic projections. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by macroeconomic projections? It's kind of top down, looking down at the economy and uh, trying to predict how the uh, what the economy is going to do. Are we going to have a a year of growth? Are we going to hear a year of decline? Maybe a recession. It's very hard to predict those kind those sorts of things. In fact, the experts, the economists, try to do it all the time, and uh, they fail at it. You know, it's amazing how how poor. Uh, the experts do it, predicting uh, large macroeconomic uh, factors. Do you remember in 20, last year, <clears throat> last year, 2023, mm-hmm. it's 2024 now, right? It is. 2023, we highlighted what the experts thought the market was going to do. Yeah. And remember the average expert thought the market was going to be down like 2%. What did the market go? What was it? What did it finish out last year? In 23? Yeah. Ooh, was it up 26? It was, it was up 24, 25, something tw- like 24, something 25, like, somewhere in there? I think yeah. so, yeah. That just highlights how wrong the experts are. Yeah. Spencer, we were texting last night on another example in our group text about emerging markets and the experts. Tell me about that. Do you think most people at like 1030 at night are texting people about emerging markets? Do you think we're <laughs> weird? I don't think we're weird. I think that's pretty normal. Yeah. Probably most people are doing that. Yeah. Um, well, you were sharing something, and I called you a bad word last <laughs> night, but go ahead and share. It, well, it was just, it was Vanguard's forecasts for the returns of asset classes over the next 10 years, and I was just laughing because it, for the last decade, maybe 20 years, I mean, so many big institutions of predicting international and emerging markets are going to outperform the U.S., and they're going to outperform the U.S., and I was joking that if you say it every year, eventually you you, you will be right. Yeah, um, because they've been wrong for so long. Oh, wrong for so it's, long. It's been 20, 20 plus years. <laughs> they've been predict- I'm not no, exaggerating. No, it's, it's, it is, it really yeah, has. it has. It's been forever, but yet... This is the time, you know, and eventually it will happen. Yeah. Eventually at one point, emerging um, markets will outperform for a year or something. But I was joking around when you're looking at the macro, so hard to predict. And if you say it every single year, there will come a time that you are right. It's, it's kind of funny. This summer, uh, emerging markets and international stocks for a brief period of time were actually outperforming U.S. markets. And guess what was on the news all the time? Everybody was writing about it. Emerging markets are starting to make their move. It's time to you know move money. Here's over to- the phrase. It's time to overweight. Yeah, yeah they say that all the time. To emerging markets. Oh, everybody, yeah, yeah. And then what happened? <laughs> well, then, it, it, uh, yeah, yeah, there's no guarantees, but those people who have done that over the last 10, 20 years have underperformed. I can't imagine investing like that. So... Which we don't. But there's, so there's two things that we don't know, or we don't do. We don't make these projections of what we guess is going to happen in the economy I mean, I, or the global market, right? I think we have opinions about these things. You know, Everybody has opinions, but it doesn't affect how we manage money. It yeah. doesn't affect in how we invest yeah. your money because we know that 
uh, it's just impossible to pred- predict those sorts of things. Well, I'll, I'll add one more macro. We talked about macroeconomic interest rates is a great example. We've talked all the time. Trying okay. to predict where the Fed funds rate and where the 10-year treasury is going to be in a year is a fool's errand. Do we have opinions on sure. what might happen? But we aren't basing our investment decisions off of our opinions. We, we just talk about it. We're aware of it. But to try to forecast and say, hey, the Fed's going to drop another 75 basis points between now and the end of the year is, in our minds, just foolish to even try to predict. Well, think about uh, during after COVID. Remember the Fed thought that inflation was transitory. It was no big deal. It wasn't going to be a problem for us. And they have over, they have several hundred PhD econo- e- 400. economists, 400 PhD economists, and they were absolutely wrong. I mean, they were, a- and they well, eventually- Because used car prices were up. <laughs> That's Fine. Right. It was used car- Someone from the Fed actually used that as their reasoning for believing it was transitory. Yeah. They said they were looking at used car prices, which is fine. But you can't base all monetary policy decisions off of right. used car prices. <laughs> well, here we are four years later, over four years later, and we still have higher levels of inflation. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> That's why we don't do it. That's right. And I don't even have an opinion on macroeconomic. I might have an opinion on who I think is going to win the election, but we still don't take action on no. it in client portfolios. No. Because we don't know for sure. Right? So back to Munger. The first rule of compounding your wealth is not to interrupt it unnecessarily. So here's what we do know. These are things we do know, okay? We know that the president doesn't determine. Whoever's elected on Tuesday does not determine if the market is higher or lower. We know that. How do we know that? Here's some returns. Going back to 1936, the average return, annualized return, For a Democrat since 1936, 11.2%. Republican, 10.5%. Like it's, you can pick any time frame and they're going to be pretty darn similar. Yeah. But, Brett. Sir. I would like to go back to 2020 or we could go back to 2016. Okay. If Biden wins, the economy is going to crash. And the market will in crash. 2020. Yeah, in 2020. Yeah, in 2020. You heard that from certain people. Bro, 2016. I'm, tr- I'm just sitting there at night when, the, when Hillary and Trump, and I see the futures. Do you remember the futures? Oh, yeah. The, on, on that night, when, that Tuesday when they, night? When they thought Trump was going to win. When yeah. it, came, when it, came, it was a realization that Trump's going to win, we were down 4 or 5%. Yeah. Next day? Flipped up by the by the opening, it was up. You know, by the but, by the time and, and that yeah. so to say about one hundred and forty percent cumulative go, over that Trump presidency. Right. If we go twenty sixteen, if Trump wins, you know, what whatever. I mean, in other words, ever it's the death of us. It's over. America's over. And and what are we hearing right now? I mean, we all have opinions of who we'd like to win the election, but both sides saying if the other side wins, it's going to destroy everything, and. History has shown us that that's probably just not the case. Yeah, there's been some pretty bad presidents. Yeah. Yeah. But 11.2% Democrat, 10.5% Republican. That speaks to capitalism. That spe- it speaks to okay. the strength of our economy. We so have let's, to- go to, let's go to that point. Okay. Because what we know is that the president doesn't determine what happens in the market. We also know, Brian, to exactly what you were saying, if you own the best companies, the best businesses in the world – you will be able to compound your wealth over time. Why? Well, businesses, if you own a great business over a long period of time, you allow that business to do what it does, and that is to create wealth, create profits over, you know, increased profitability over time, which will increase the value of that business. That's how you build wealth. And so we want to own, we, you know, our, our goal at Iron Gate is to own the best businesses in the world. And allow them to, and be patient. Allow them to compound and grow profitability. Okay. So let's 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 do an example. Okay. Um, let's just pick Amazon. That's not a recommendation to buy anything. It's just an example of a business that is in our portfolio. Okay. In times of inflation, 
right? Inflationary periods. We're talking about Amazon. You can pick any great business out there. Right. How does Amazon fight inflation? Well, they can do a couple things. They can raise prices. They can cut costs. Pricing power. Pricing power. They have the ability to raise prices on their products or their services. They can also reduce, try to reduce expenses, which is, you know, maybe difficult during an inflationary time. But owning a great business or owning great assets during inflationary time is the best way to fight inflation. To fight inflation. To, to preserve your purchasing power. I, I, I'm going to add one of our criteria for businesses that we buy is good management that we trust. And the way I articulate this sometimes to clients, why that is uh, one of our core key criteria. When you go back to Buffett's evaluation of inflationary times, he identified two things in the in the businesses that Berkshire owned that did well. And one was pricing power and one was exceptional management. And the way I say it is, look, it's going to hit the fan at some point and it's going to get crazy. And whether this guy's president or this guy's president or that person is president, that woman's president, whoever it is, a good business with competitive advantages run by good people are going to navigate it and money's going to flow to them. I mean, they, yeah. it, whether it's there's a whole bunch of money in the economy and it's flowing to everyone, or if money shrinks and it, there's not as much, it's only going to flow to the best places and it's going to go to the best businesses. So would you say then, based, and I love that, thank you, Spencer, would you say, okay, we're talking about inflation, Brian addressed that, bear markets, right? That, That's exactly yeah, if, what you're if, talking if about. If there's less capital out there, it's it's gonna flow. It's not gonna flow everywhere. It's gonna flow to the best places, yeah. and that's gonna be the 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 best run businesses with the best products, the best services run by the best people, and the peripheral, the speculative stuff, the stuff that's not run by good people, good business managers that doesn't have a great product or a great service. Those are the ones that are gonna go by the wayside in the bear market. Okay. Yep. So what we know, the president doesn't determine how the market does, and if you own the best businesses in the world, you'll compound your wealth. Here's some other things that we do know. Based on history, we know that the market annually, on average, declines 14% per year, right? From peak to bottom, an average of 14%. Yeah, you're saying at a point, not not at the end of the year, but at some point some during point the year, during it's going to pull back 14.3% on no, average. No, that's that's the average, but the average includes years that was down 2% one year. 30% the Down next. 30%, you know, so it's the average. So how right? does knowing that average help an investor? That I, What we know help an investor. I, I think having the expectation that you're going to have down periods when the market goes down and know that's going to happen and be mentally prepared, be prepared that that will happen and not to panic and just know that that's normal. That's going to happen during the normal course of business. If that's it, if I'm in a really good frame of mind, I know one of my kids going to throw a tantrum at some point. <laughs> if I'm not in a good frame of mind, I don't react well to it. But if I'm in a good frame of mind, I'm expecting it. I'm like, this is just part of life. I handle that tantrum so much better. And I'm just like, hey, it's okay. It's It'll a, all work that's out. That's a great point. Type of thing. And that's the same thing in the market. If you just have the expectation and the understanding, hey, it's going to go down. And we probably say that too much to our clients. It will go down. Um, it's like, hey, this is just part of the process. And that allows you to be able to prepare for it. Yeah. Right. So when it is down and when you're fearful, you give us your money yeah. <laughs> so that we can buy assets. It's it's interesting. The clients that we've that we we've, we've worked with for years, even decades, they've they've been through these ups and downs, and they don't they don't panic about it. You know, I I yeah. do worry about new clients that are just new with us and have never been through a down market. You know that, and then we really have to talk to them and encourage them to be patient. Hopefully they're listening to this podcast. Yeah. Yep. So that's what we also, so we do know that. We also know that in history, going to history to help us as a guide, the average bull market is 60 months in length. Bull markets last longer than any, you know, the, the most people because of the fire hose the, of negativity. Right. Bull markets last longer than, than most people think. We're at month 24. So... Could we 
go till month 40. Yeah. Or we could go. Well, and I think that also goes back to our point we just made about bear markets. Just because we're hitting all-time highs today you know, or near all-time highs right now doesn't mean that that's the end of a bull market. It doesn't mean that at all. It can and, keep going. And so I, yep. think it, I think you have to manage your expectations. I think a lot of people get nervous when we make all-time highs thinking, well, the all-time high, we got to have a, you know, we got to have a big decline. That's not necessarily the case. Yep. This, this market can go longer and higher than you may expect. We did a we did a podcast earlier in the year that that kind of talked about how average returns never happen right. and it's usually the larger returns that right. are more normal. Right. Yep, that speaks to that. So with let me just relax. Yeah, exactly, relax and I'll just say that I'm not we're not predicting that the market's going to go 60, you know, a bull market is going to go 60. 60.2. Uh, yeah, we're not <laughs> we're not predicting that's necessarily that that's we don't. the case. But it could happen. Just right? understand could, history right. to help you prepare mentally, yeah. right? Yeah. And here's the last thing that we do know. And this speaks to Spencer, to your wheelhouse. And Matthew and Dylan's. Yeah. If you have the right plan in place uh, and stick to it, you'll end up being okay. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Ben Franklin. I like that. Good quote, Ben. <laughs> Um, yeah, it just have the right plan in place. And I mean, obviously we do financial planning for a lot of our clients that financial planning can give the peace of mind, uh, to know that, Hey, we build in scenarios where the market goes down. We, we know it's going to go down at times and people can still achieve their financial goals. So having the right plan in place makes a big, big difference. That's what we do know. Here's my election prediction. Oh, oh. Hide the women and children. You ready for this? <laughs> Here's what I predict. I predict Kamala <laughs> is going to call Trump Hitler. Oh, yeah. That's a prediction. Yeah. Okay. And Trump, Trump is going to call her what? Who knows? Crazy <laughs> Kamala. Okay. Yeah. Oh, is that what he calls her? Yeah. I don't know. Communist Kamala? I can't I remember. Know. I don't know. I don't know. They both call each They're other They're going to throw stones. That's the only prediction I have. Yeah. Good. Well, you have a prediction? Um, I will stay up late. I do. You want to know what? I will give kind of a prediction. I think whoever wins Pennsylvania will win the the election. I think it'll come down to Pennsylvania. So that's my prediction. Okay. Should I go? Should I do a straddle on Pennsylvania then? I don't know what you should do. So, so uh, straddle a reverse batter, butterfly. <laughs> I don't know what you should do. Um, but okay. That's, that's my prediction about that. I'm not making any investment decisions off of that, but I think Pennsylvania will decide the right. winner. That's why they're spending a lot of time in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Any, uh, <laughs> any predictions? No predictions here. None. I mean, somebody's going to win. What is the 10-year yield going to do with the <laughs> election results? <laughs> who knows? The 10-year yield. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Stick with what you do know. And compounding your wealth becomes a lot easier. Yeah. With that, my friends, we'll talk to you after the election. And we'll celebrate or we'll be sad or we won't even talk about the election. <laughs> One of the three. This is a purely public broadcast and is not intended to be personalized financial advice for any individual specific situation. Each individual's financial situation is unique, and the topics discussed on this broadcast should not be relied upon and or considered as personalized advice. Specific financial securities discussed are not intended to address any listener's particular financial situation and should not be considered recommendations. This is for educational purposes only. For more information, please contact Iron Gate Global Advisors at info at igga.com.